Hey crafty friends, it's Katya and I hope you are doing well. To all of you who are new subscribers, welcome to my channel. I'm happy to have you here. I am participating in a blog hop today called Spread Joy Not Germs. And while it's just a blog hop, I thought it would be easier for me to share a recorded video on how I made these two cards in addition to sharing it on my blog. This fun blog hop is about a bunch of crafty bloggers coming together to share inspiration and joy to fellow stampers that are at home, alone, anxious, or all of the above. <laughs> Something to take your mind off of the news and to help you stay positive while you're staying at home. This blog hop also has over 25 companies that are sponsoring this event and also offering prizes. So in the description box below, I'll have full detailed instructions and links of how to enter. So let's get started on the cards. I'm using an oldie but goodie stamp set called Mirror Blocks by Paper Smooches. I don't think I've even actually ever used this stamp set yet, but I'm breaking it out now though, right? This stamp set is actually designed to help you mirror stamped images, but I'm using the rectangle block to help create this colored pattern that you see here on the screen using Catherine Pooler inks. So I have a disclaimer here, and that is to say that these inks by Catherine Pooler are wonderful, and I really have, and they have beautiful coverage, but because I've had these ink pads for a while, they sort of dried out and I needed to re-ink them. So I do have a set of re-inkers on the way, but in this video, I'm stamping two or three times just to get a deep saturated color. So I did speed up this video and kept most everything in the footage to show you a little well, let me take that back. A big mistake where I drop one of my ink pads on my project, but I was able to salvage it. So I wanted to show you how I fix it. So initially my, my idea was to have a one layer design, but it actually became two layers because of the mishap. But I just kept it in here to show you how you can quickly fix things to maximize your design and just keep going with it so you don't have to start all over. So my thinking was that because I'm working with seven colors, I wanted to start with the green. I think it's Lime, Lime Ricky that I'm working with here. And then I worked my way over to the right using the shades of blue and then purple. And then when I was done with that, I moved um, using those grid squares that you see on the screen on my stamping platform. I moved that to the left uh, to the right so I could work on the colors on the left and I worked with orange uh, yellow and red and I wanted to slightly overlap each one of the colors to get a new shade of color and oh my gosh this technique does not disappoint with the colors of the rainbow super pretty and you can get so many different colors using these beautiful inks so while I show you the process of how I created these two cards, I will tell you that paper makes all the difference when you're working with inks. This ink is gorgeous. It actually levels out and smooths and just melts right into the paper, so to speak. So you'll see in one of the cards that I created, I wasn't really happy with how the ink was saturating into the paper. That was because of the paper. But in the other one, I noticed that when I was using this other one that I'll tell you about, I really loved the results of how the ink just smooths out and becomes seamless with the paper. It's really pretty. So the paper that I like the best that I'm working with is called International Paper and it's called Cover Smooth Accent Opaque Digital. And what I will do is leave a link for it in the description box below because when you're working with high quality paper, your inks will really make a difference on how they react with the paper. So one of the tips I can share with you that'll be helpful if you decide to try this technique is to make sure that you work from lightest to darkest inks. So do the reverse of what I do. And the reason being is because at one point I did get some darker ink in one of my lighter ink pads and I had to really kind of clean it off to make sure that it stamps with the true ink color. So here's where you're gonna see my mishap. I'm moving on to the orange color, which is really pretty. And again, like I said, since I don't have really saturated ink pads, I did have to stamp it a couple of times. And while it may seem like I'm not paying attention to those grid squares, I am because sometimes when the paper would lift up, I'd have to pay attention to exactly where I needed to put it back to make sure it was right in the exact same place. And since it's a clear stamp, you can kind of see where it goes. But you'll see when I stamp here, the ink pad slips out of my hands. Um, on this third go round and falls out and onto my project, but thankfully it did not mess up the all the work that I'd already done. So, oops, there you go. Nice work. 
So like I said, because that ink pad did not fall directly on all of the work I'd already done, I just kept on going, moved all the way to the right, and then finished up with that red color. And then I decided I was going to trim a little white border just right up where that ink pad fell, um, leaving a little white border so that I could use all of that colored rainbow goodness. So here is the final stamped image, and as that dries further, those inks will completely smooth out. Now I left this part in here so that I could show you the difference in the quality of paper that you're working with. The one that has the friend die, see how the inks are very, very smooth? But now look at the one that's off to the left of the die cut machine. You can actually kind of see the fibers in that paper, and that's because that's a completely different cardstock that I use. So I wanted to show you that you should choose a piece of paper that really um, goes for the image that you're looking for or the quality that you're looking for. So I really like the smooth paper results on the one that I'm using with the die cut right now. Wasn't super a huge fan of the one off to the left, but if that doesn't bother you, then it doesn't really matter, but it really makes a difference with the ink quality and how the ink saturates and moves into the paper. So I thought it'd be fun to create these two cards using the eclipse technique. And for those of you who may be new to card making, the eclipse technique basically means you cut out a die and then you use several pieces of cardstock cutting out the same die to layer on top of each other and then putting that final piece right on the very top to give it a lot of dimension. And then when you look from the side, you see those layers, that stacked layers of paper. And in this case, I'm using white. So as you can see, that friend die is really intricate. And of course, through the abyss of all those little small die cut pieces, I did lose the tittle to the eye. But fear no more because I'm going to be using Nouveau Crystal Drops. And I'm using the color called Gloss Apple Green. And that was the perfect complement to that Lime Ricky of the ink pad that I'm using with Catherine Pooler inks. And I just thought it was the perfect little touch. Now I didn't capture this on video, but I did use my glitter brush pen by scrapbook.com on the top of the colored die cut to give it some sparkle, and then I added Nouveau Crystal Glaze to give it some shine. So there you have it. I have my basic design with all of the dimension finished, and then I move on to the hugs card panel, and I finish that in the exact same way that I did the friends design. Here is a close-up of the Friends card. I jazzed it up with some sequins, clear gem drops that were in my stash, and a small sentiment on the front. I decided to leave the Hugs card as is. If you haven't already, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and perhaps leave me a comment if you'd like, and consider subscribing for more inspiration. So until we meet again, have a great day and thanks for stopping by. Ciao for now!